Welcome back to the last installment of Welcome back to the last installment of Optimistic Trends. Uh, again, in case you missed the last two, the world seems to be going in the wrong direction, right? People are more and more negative about the direction of the world. Most people think it's getting worse. A lot of people think that it's staying the same and only a very small sliver of people think it's getting better, but all the data points to it getting better. And so if you're in that small sliver who thinks that the world is improving, you're right, everyone else is wrong, and we've got the data to prove it. So this is our third installment. If you missed the other two, you can go back and find those. I'm getting these from the book, 10 Global Trends, every smart person should know and others that you may find interesting. Uh, you can find this on Amazon, like 14 bucks as of this recording. I would recommend it. It's a nice coffee table book. It gives you plenty of uh, ammo if you're an optimist and you're trying to convince your pessimistic friends. I don't make anything off of it. I just want to avoid any copyright infringement. So I want to encourage you to go buy it. Um, Links in the podcast or in the uh, blog for this. I also, if you're not, if you're just listening to this, you could again, read the blog or watch the video so you can see some of the trend uh, graphs that will be shown as well from the book. So today we're going to cover trend number nine and 10 and then touch briefly on the other trends that they talked about. So we covered the first eight and the first two episodes. Now on to number nine, the long piece. Optimistic trend number nine, the long piece. So in, in 1946, there were about 50 countries. Okay. Today there's about 200. And, and, and you know, for, for decolonization and, and striving for independence have quadrupled the number of sovereign countries that are out there. And one would expect, I think, through that, if, if you, get, you know, expand the number of countries by a factor of four, you would expect that there'd be more interstate conflict, right? That more countries would be warring against each other for dominance or for whatever other reason. <coughs> and so you'd think that, that as the number of countries increase, so would the, the war and conflict. But that's not the case. That's not what we see. And despite our, our short-term memory, right, fixating on, on Russia invading Ukraine and that we still see wars, the number of interstate wars has decreased since the end of World War II, right? And the rate at which those wars are decreasing, it seems to be improving. And this is due mainly to how entwined all the countries are in terms of their economics and, and, and wealth-building pursuits, right? If, and, and armed conflict is bad for everyone. Uh, countries with, that are the furthest behind economically are those who are are largely war torn and, and torn apart by internal violence and and you know violence destroying property and businesses and lives isn't good for businesses and lives and so I think most people have sort of uh, agreed that hey we will go further and we will get more ahead if we get along and and, and so um, there's been less and less aggression across borders as people pursue prosperity. And so the decline of wars has been inarguable, uh, that it's been an absolute positive and that even though it's not completely gone and we still see some wars, um, it, the trend is absolutely awesome. And of course, if you look at uh, so many other the indicators, right? Like, again, I always think, just personally, this isn't part of the book, but personally, I just think like, if you think that we're worse off today than we were, you know, 20 or 80, 100 years ago, like go back and, and Take another history lesson out of World War One, World War Two, because uh, we are nowhere even close to that, and things have gotten much better since then. And, and again, the decline of wars is just one great trend that we see out there. Uh, and then ten optimistic trend number ten from the book, a safer world. Right. So over the last hundred years, the chances of someone dying from a natural disaster have decreased almost ninety nine percent right? You are 1% as likely to be killed in a natural disaster now than you were 100 years ago, right? And, and most of that's due to the technological advancements we've seen uh, in, in a couple things. One, in infrastructure, right? Buildings, bridges, roads, all these things, they're better designed to withstand natural disasters than they were 100 years ago. So we don't have as many buildings collapsing in an earthquake and killing people. We don't have, like all these different things, right? Um, and then also technological advances in, in, in detection and early warning signs have improved so much that we can now evacuate more people, get people out of harm's way. And while we see, we see more destruction in terms of a dollar amount of property, it's mostly because we're also richer. And so we can afford to put more wealth in harm's way by building in Florida and other places, right? Um, and so there's, you know, there's still plenty of destruction from natural disasters, but the number of people we lose in these natural disasters is very 
low. So, you know, all these things have allowed us to survive, avoid, and evade more natural disasters. So, and, and the largest disasters, the things that keep those numbers even higher than they would be otherwise, uh, that have happened over the last two decades have largely occurred in the developing world. So the, the three largest natural disasters we've had in the last two decades were in 2004, uh, the Indian Ocean tsunami, you may remember that, that killed 230,000 people. Uh, in 2010, the Haitian earthquake killed about 223,000 people. And in 2008, uh, Cyclone Nargis, uh, a Category 4 storm in Myanmar, killed 138 thousand people. So you see these little blips in the graph, and those are those big disasters that we've had, but by and large, they are, you know, all going uh, way down. And, and here's a here's a comparison I think that illustrates really well just how good our technology is, has become at helping us avoid death by natural disaster. So again, that last example, uh, a cyclone, a, a category four cyclone in Myanmar killed 138,000 people. Well, two years later, a Category 5 cyclone, so much stronger, much more powerful, much more damaging, hit Australia and killed zero people. So Category 4 hits Myanmar, kills 138,000 people. Two years later, a Category 5 storm hits Australia and kills zero people. That's how much better we are at, at detecting these and, and, and as our, you know, as our, well, you know, all going all the way back to that very first trend, right? That as the world gets richer and we can afford more and more uh, to put resources into technology and to uh, avoiding them and to detecting natural disasters, getting people out of the way, we can reduce these things. And, and uh, you know, there's still, you know, it still kills many people. Uh, natural disasters do if for no other reason then there's a lot more of us to be killed but the percentage of people the the number of people per 100,000 killed by natural disaster is way 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 down one percent of what it used to be a hundred years ago and those same technological advances that are helping us in countries like the U.S. and Australia and all these things to avoid deaths by natural disaster as the great enrichment pulls developing countries into the middle class helps uh, support them we should hopefully in the next few decades be able to give all that technology and get that technology in their hands and prevent things like those earthquakes, hurricanes, tsunamis, those things uh, from killing as many people in the future. So all those trends point in the right direction and we live in a much, much safer world. So those are the 10 trends that the book is talking about when it calls itself the 10 global trends every smart person should know. Uh, but they have many more than just 10 trends in this book. And, you know, the subtitle is, and many more that you may find interesting, uh, indeed, it actually covers 78 trends that are all very encouraging. So uh, I list them all. We're going to run through them quickly. The, you know, I'm not going to comment on any of them. Uh, they're all pr like pretty good. They're all significant. Uh, some will raise asterisks as to the side effects, right? Some will definitely have negative side effects that we'll need to address. Uh, some people will disagree, agree or disagree to how good the trend is. And, and, you know, again, some of those sometimes side effects from these trends may be worse, right? The cure may be worse than the disease in some, in the minds of some people. I'm not going to comment on them in this episode. So we're just going to run through all these. And uh, if any of these are interesting, again, you can buy the book. It's like $14. It's really, it's a bargain. Um, and you can just look into the ones that you find are interesting. Or if you find some that are like totally contrary to what you think or what you thought you've heard, then those would be ones worth exploring. So, the authors separate them into several different categories, so I'm going to do the same. So the first one is people trends, and here's the trends, right? Uh, trend number 11, life options are expanding. T uh, trend number 12, global happiness is rising. 13, global income is rising. 14, global in income inequality is falling. Global income inequality is falling. I know it's going to maybe want make... Some of you guys want to look into that one because that seems very contrary to what you what you hear. Uh, Fifteen, the percent of people living in slums is declining. Sixteen, the number of and percentage of women in political leadership is increasing. World leaders, uh, all those things. Uh, number seventeen, births per women are decreasing. Eighteen, global literacy rates are approaching a hundred percent. We should again see that soon. Um, Nineteen, more kids are going to school. 20, kids are going to school for longer and learning more. Uh, 21, IQ scores are massively rising across the globe. 22, more and more countries are decriminalizing LGBTQ. 
23, there's a general, though not perfect, increase in the free press throughout the world. And 24, life expectancies are rising. So lots of good trends uh, with people throughout the globe. Uh, then they separate, so they got some health trends here. So number 25, the global death rate is falling. The, the number of people, percentage of people dying by any given cause is declining. Uh, 26, vastly fewer people, or vastly, vastly fewer children die young. Uh, so 1950, 140 per 1,000 kids died is as children. And today it is 29 out of 1,000, or it was in 2017. And I think that's still going in the right direction. Uh, 27, mothers are living longer. 28, vaccines are saving lives. 29, we are overcoming HIV AIDS. 30, we are trouncing tuberculosis. Awesome. Uh, 31, malaria is retreating. 32, we are winning the war on cancer. 33, tobacco usage is declining. 34, vaccine discoveries are accelerating. So again, you can see all those trends, graphs for all of them, explanations for all those in the book. Then the next category they have is violence trends. Here's some more tidbits for you. 35, the global murder rate is falling substantially. It's an interesting graph to look at. 36, capital punishment is declining. 37, battle death rate is declining, right? So we kind of talked about that with the world wars declining or interstate conflict declining. The amount of people killed in wars is also just plummeting compared to what it used to be. Um, so that's good. 38 genocides are disappearing. 39 military spending ratio is falling. Ratio uh, Military spending as a percentage of total GDP is going down. 40 armies as a percentage of the population are shrinking. And 41 ars nuclear arsenals worldwide are dwindling. Those all sound like good things to me. Uh, work trends. Number 42, we are working less for more income in general. Number 43, work is getting safer. 44, children labor less. There are less children uh, in child labor or working is in worse condition, all those things. Um, 45, the nature of work is changing. 46, the wage gap between men and women is narrowing. 47, emancipation is universal. There are no countries where, it, where uh, chattel slavery is legal. They note in that one, right, there's other forms of slavery that we have kind of arisen that we are combating. But at least legally throughout the world, it is now illegal everywhere, which uh, for something that's been around for thousands of years is a good, good thing. Uh, natural resource trends. Number 48, we've reached peak farmland. Uh, so we, we are using now as much farmland as experts believe we will ever use. And that should start to decrease as we get more efficient in the way we do things. Uh, 49, we're conserving more land and sea. 50, global CO2 emissions per GDP dollar is decreasing. Uh, 51, there's no peak oil reserves in sight. So as, as, you know, as we continue to get more oil, the reserves continue to keep pace with uh, how much we are pulling out. Uh, known natural gas reserves are increasing. That's 52. 53, we are using water more efficiently now than we ever have in the past. 54, we are producing more with less, less materials, less energy, all these things. We're getting more efficient in the way that we use our natural resources. Some farm trends, hunger is retreating, right? The global undernourishment rate is declining. Uh, 56, global grain production is still increasing. 57, yields are increasing. So the amount of food we're able to get out of the same given amount of resources is increasing. Uh, we're farming needing more fish and our protein consumption is increasing throughout the globe, which supports healthier bodies, stronger bodies, more uh, abilities to do things, which is, again, some of these things don't seem like much to us in the US because we've, been, we've encountered these things for a long time, but they're happening now throughout the rest of the world. And it's a great thing. Uh, number six, some or some tech trends. Uh, 60, global access to electricity is increasing. We're almost at 100% there. Lighting costs nearly nothing. Used to have to work uh, like eight hours just to generate a thousand lumens of light. And now it's just you know, minutes or seconds to be able to generate uh, that much. So that's great. Number 62, solar power is getting cheaper. You should see the curve on that one. It's awesome. I personally love solar power and I'm looking forward to seeing that continue to become better and better. Uh, clean drinking water access is improving across the globe. 64, sanitation is improving. Mobile phone usage is increasing. Global internet access is increasing. Uh, computer processing power is getting exponentially cheaper. Global tourism, it was rising. 
pre-pandemic uh, at all income levels, which is great. We'll see kind of how that you know shakes back out uh, post-pandemic here. But at number 69, tariffs are falling. So we're becoming better at trading across the globe. And then they wrap it up with some U.S. trends. So all the rest of those are global and they share a few U.S. trends at the, o- at the end. Um, the share of spending on household basics is declining. So the, the amount of our income in general that is going towards just basic items is going down, giving us more discretionary income to spend on other things. The cost and adoption of new technologies are improving. Violent crime rates are falling steeply. Racist attitudes are declining. Air pollution is falling steeply. We're getting bigger and better homes. Vaccines are rising. Infectious diseases are plunging. Air travel is getting cheaper. And lastly, cancer incidences and death rates are both going down. Both of those are improving. Um, so yeah, optimistic trends everywhere. Uh, across the, back, the spectrum, most of the world is going in the right direction. That, that, that's not to say there aren't hiccups in some of these. That's not to say that we can't find some statistics that are going in the wrong direction. But what I think what it does do is it proves that no matter what the problem is, we can fix it. Right? We, can, we can find ways to, to take these things that were huge problems, seemingly insurmountable issues in the past that are now being solved, some to the point of, of extinction, and we can do the same thing with any other problems that we have. And so I love human ingenuity. I love the innovation. Some of the ways, you know, some of the solutions that we have now, people couldn't even imagine, you know, 10, 15, 50 years ago, whatever it is. Uh, and, and so that, I believe that's what we'll see as we continue to face problems and continue to have global catastrophes and crises that we will find ways to overcome them, right? And that there isn't anything that we can't solve. And so I am extremely optimistic about the future because of all the data of the past, right? This is not a blind optimism that I'm inviting you to have. It's not a blind optimism that I have. We are rational optimists around here. And so we, we are excited for what the future brings. And again, most of these advances are spearheaded by the best business in the world. A lot of the technological innovations that have enabled these great trends were created by businesses that then go on to sell them for you know, massive world benefit and also massive profits. And, and so either they have spearheaded and they've created these trends or they have been able to capitalize on these trends for, again, greater world benefit and greater profits for the owners of those businesses. So again, here's the question, right? As the world continues to actually improve, as it's doing, all these trend lines are continuing, like, not any of these are trend lines that, hey, they were improving in the past, but now they flattened out. No, they're all still going in the right direction, all 78 of them. Are you going to participate in this improvement, right? Are you going to, to be an owner of the best business in the world that are profiting from these improvements and helping the world? Or are you going to sit on the sidelines? Are you going to let the fear of what may happen in the next month or year or three years deter you from engaging in what's going to happen over the next one, two, and three decades and beyond and the growth that's going to happen? And my answer is that it's definitely not going to be for me and not for my clients as long as I can help it, right? That we want to be a part of these improvements, that we want to be just like the market trends in the right direction and all these other things are trending in the right direction. We want to be on that upward trend and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what else is in store for us. So hopefully this has been encouraging for you. There's reasons to be concerned about this, that, and the other thing in the short term, but everything long-term, all the long-term trends are going in the right direction. And I believe we can turn around anything else as well. Go now in peace. Enjoy the rest of your week and we'll see you next week. Cheers. If you enjoyed that, you would love being part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership and has a host of benefits all for free. For example, you can always buy my book, 3D Retirement Income on Amazon. But if you join us at Retire Membership, we will send you either a hard copy or paperback for free, provide the ebook and the audiobook so that you can listen to it if you don't have time to read it. In addition to that, we'll also provide you with a bunch of content that you can't get anywhere else. For example, we have our quarterly retire mentorship magazine, which comes out quarterly and has no ads whatsoever. It's just timely content to help you stay the course. We also have workbooks for our free online workshop to help you get the most out of those, flowcharts to help you make better decisions, and a weekly email to provide timely content that you can unsubscribe from at any time. 
We never ask for any payment information and we never share your information with anyone else. We just want to provide timely content and help you stay the course to retire successfully and stay successfully retired. There's no reason to wait. So join us now at retiremembership.com where you can click in the link in the description and it'll go right there. We can't wait to see you in the community. Cheers. This podcast is educational only and is not investment, tax, or legal advice.